Why, hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again, and today I wanted to go ahead and talk to you guys about my league starters for the upcoming Delve League for Path of Exile. Now, before I start this video, I want to make a huge disclaimer and state the following. This is my first time using Path of Building, and these are simply build templates. The way I theorycraft is just a little bit different from you guys. I'm not really good with the math and numbers. I personally actually like play the game, and after I have an idea of my character, I would prefer to import it onto Path of Building and then tweak around with the gear and everything else. So the purpose of this video is to show you guys the templates of the builds, because the passive trees are really easy for me to make. What's difficult for me is the itemization and priority, and that's why none of these numerics here matter in any type of way. What I'm basically going to show you is the tree, the skill tree progression, the ascendancy, the reason why we're choosing the ascendancy, and then on top of that, just to show you the amount of effective life the build is going to have, because that to me is one of the most important things in Path of Exile. As long as you have a solid skill tree foundation and your layered defenses are fine, damage can always be acquired. That is how the progression of hardcore usually goes, unless of course you're trying to race. So, with that being said, uh, I do have two builds for you guys. I've got a Caustic Arrow Trickster and a Templar Dominating Blow with the new Herald of Purity. Now, if you guys weren't aware, Caustic Arrow received some significant changes. Uh, part of them was a 2.5 damage multiplier increase to the Cloud's damage over time, meaning that doing a damage over time Caustic Arrow build, specifically scaling the Cloud, not Poison, not initial hit, it cannot shotgun, but that's what I'm trying to do. If you guys don't know, I've played Death's Oath to level 98, I've played Blight to level 100, and I've played Righteous Fire to level 100, and I really like damage over time. So there's something really satisfying about it. So let's jump into the Caustic Arrow Trickster and why I'm playing a Trickster instead of, for example, a Pathfinder. So, First off, there is absolutely nothing wrong with Pathfinder. You could literally play this build going from a champion. I would say champion is probably better for bossing if that's what your goal is. Simply because you um, take mitigated, da you take reduced damage for taunting. You're always going to taunt. You have the 20% damage multiplier, or sorry, enemies you taunt take 20% increased damage, which should work for the uh, new Herald of Agony, which creates the Toxic Crawler guy, and you would get Fortify. The problem with Champion, and the reason why I'm not going to play it, is number one, I don't want to bottleneck myself behind an Uber Lab. I want to really enjoy the game. I don't want to go super try hard like I usually do. Or, well, I guess I haven't in the past couple leagues, but you know what I mean, right? I want my build to feel good by the time I get to maps. And with Champion, unfortunately, you're either losing your big damage reduction source or your big damage increase source, but, you know, from Uber Lab. So, the other option with Pathfinder, and the reason why we're not playing Pathfinder, is in my opinion, Pathfinder is much better for scaling either hybrid with damage over time in initial hit, or just scaling poison. As you can see by some of the nodes here, uh, chaos skills have 50% increased area of effect. When you kill a poisoned enemy during any flask effect, nearby enemies are poisoned, aka that's essentially poison proliferation. You also have max Toxist, which gives you 10% of your physical as extra chaos. This would not help us. 10% of physical converted to chaos would not help us. 10% more chaos damage would help us. The virulence, I haven't really decided if we're going to be running it yet. That is something that I need to play around with and figure out, like, if we can effectively gain stacks without making the build feel clunky, you know? Um, if the single target is good enough as it is, then we probably won't need to use it. If we do need to use it, that'll be addressed in a future video, and I will be more than happy to explain how to set it up. So by going Trickster, here's the benefits that we gain. So number one, we get Patient Reaper. Patient Reaper gives 50% increased damage over time. It also gives 2% maximum life on kill, which is really good because the purpose of maximum life on kill is think of it like this. If you were to say get frozen or get stunned and your damage over time is still on the floor, which it will be, it will kill the targets and heal you even though you're in a, you know, a situation where you are unable to move. Um, this is something that's kind of looked over and people don't realize how often it, it does actually help you when you're mapping. For bossing, it's not really going to help you very much. Next up, we get Prolonged Pain, which gives us skill effect duration, which is not bad considering the Caustic Arrow skill gem has been reduced to a two second duration cloud. Um, so this just helps you with that. You don't really need much duration. It's really just quality of life. 
You also take reduced damage over time, which is nice because we are going to be playing a life base build. Um, so mitigating any type of damage over time is great, you know, poison. Um, and then we get increased poison duration, which I don't think does anything for us. And then we just get a flat multiplier to our damage over time. Now you also do gain Swift Killer. Uh, Swift Killer is really strong because it gives us Frenzy Charge Generation without needing to run Blood Rage. We also get uh, plus one max Frenzy and plus one max power and the increased damage per Frenzy Charge will work for damage over time because it's increased damage. So with that being said, let's go ahead. Oh yeah, and then Uber Lab. Your Uber Lab is really up to you. If you decide you want to play like hybrid or maybe pure damage over time doesn't work, Harness the Void is a really strong skill to get. Um, if you feel that mana cost is too high or vice versa, if you feel that you can support the mana cost for this, then Weave the Arcane is really strong because you get reduced damage taken for four seconds and you'll be trying to spam, but I don't really think you're gonna use that much mana, but I could totally be wrong. And then the flip side, you could just get Ghost Ants, which is <clears throat> not necessarily bad either. It does give you 40% increased attack and cast speed if Energy Shield has uh, recharge has started recently. That's not bad. Usually you will get a random amount of uh, a random amount of energy shield on your gear. You also get 20% more chance to evade while on full energy shield. 10% chance to dodge attacks and spells. Um, a spell hits while you have energy shield, and then just movement speed. So overall, it's just like quality of life, but not required necessarily like champion. Champion is more like, you know, you want both, so you're gonna force Uber Lab as fast as you can because you would get Worthy Foe and you would get Fortitude. And the last option is you could just simply take two baby nodes for quality of life. You could take, you know, 10% uh, damage over time and attack speed, and for example, evasion, blah, 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 blah. Also, one other thing with Champion is you would get free uh, Unstoppable Hero, which would give you a thousand evasion, which is pretty nice to scale. So, let's get started. So I've got this tree built for you guys. So level one to 20, you're going to start, you know, vice versa. You're gonna basically follow the build along, continue nice and happy. You're 20 to 40, you can see, you start going down. We end up picking piercing shots and our goal is to get a plus one arrow on our quiver. What that's gonna mean is we're gonna shoot two arrows. Those two arrows will pierce. When they pierce, they will also create poison clouds. The reason for this is we have no AOE scaling in our build, so we do want to try to get that second arrow whenever we can. Um, I have some ideas for it. There's a recipe you can use to make, I don't know if it's called Hiri's Ire, which is a low level unique quiver. I don't know if you can vol it for plus one arrow if there's an item level requirement, but in, in general, um, that's something to think about and I'll, I'll explain more later. This is just a template, remember. Um, we're also gonna grab these Fatal Toxin nodes. Uh, they are really, really, really good for damage over time scaling. We have 10% increased cast damage with attack skills, 15% cast damage with attack skills, and a 30% damage over time with attack skills. And in case we decide to use uh, Ag their Herald of Agony with the Crawler, we do have option of so much poison on hit on our tree. Uh, moving down, we're gonna grab Acrobatics. I would recommend moving away from phase Acrobatics until about maps, but it's really up to you. Um, coming down, I've also decided to skip jewels until you feel they're necessary to put them in. Um, we have really good scaling on heavy draw, 10% damage over time, 15, 15, 15, and then 24% increased damage over time. You have additional damage you can grab by deadly draw. Um, moving down over to herbalism, and then you should have your first labyrinth point, patient reaper. Next up, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the next one, 41 to 60. You can see this unlocks over here. Uh, via you get finesse. We're gonna grab the evasion and life. We're gonna grab heart of the oak Ballistic mastery remember projectile damage scaling should or will now work for the cloud damage over time and then aspect of the eagle Now one thing that's gonna be cool is this build is actually gonna have pretty good movement speed And I'll show you where you're gonna get movement speed from the stun avoidance here You're also gonna get movement speed from aspect of the eagle Moving down we go to grab toxic strikes you can if you want, if you don't want this extra damage, you feel like you don't really need it, you can go ahead and drop down, connect this way. It's the same amount of points. You would lose Toxic Strikes. You could grab Celerity for more movement speed. So next up, I'm gonna drag it to, oh, do we pick up? Yeah, and then you get Prolonged Pain. So I'm gonna drop this down to the next one, 61 through 80, which pulls us over to Avatar of the Hunt. Really good because again, three, 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 we get 9% movement speed. 
Um, we also get increased damage over time, so 10, 10, and 24, with the additional 12% and 24%. I decided to move into Duelist, because as Duelist we get Art of the Gladiator. This is going to ignore all movement penalties from armor, which is essentially, guess what, movement speed. Um, I decided to pick up Life Regen, you don't have to get it if you don't want to. Uh, and then I'm working my way down to Fury Bolt, so we can go over to Golem's Blood. So, let's go ahead, 81 to 100. Uh, from here, we are now picking up Golem's Blood. We also decided to go ahead and move through over to, um, over to Scion. The reason why I prioritize this jewel over the other ones is simply because it's a one-point jewel, and you can very easily find a one-point filler jewel, even from just a quest reward. You also have quality of life for skill effect duration. So this is pretty much the layout of what your tree is going to look like. And then the final one is pretty much just filling in the nodes. You can see here by applying this, we pick up all of our jewels. We grab our phase acrobatics. Uh, you can choose, I know I don't have it, but you can choose to like move some points around and grab exceptional performance. It is entirely up to you what you want to do. As a reminder, this is just a template for the build. Okay. So now that you have that, I'll have this linked obviously in the path of building on the YouTube comments. Let's go ahead and move over to the skill tab. Now, uh, as I said before, nothing here is finalized. This is not min-maxed. Don't look at numbers, please. This is just to give you an idea for newer players. So the caustic arrow at level 28 is now equivalent to what the new caustic arrow will be. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you the numerics just to confirm for you guys. Uh, PoE Caustic Arrow. So if you go ahead and look, Caustic Arrow at level 28 is 1,684 damage over time. If you look at the current new Caustic Arrow over here, it is 1,714, which means it's actually stronger than a level 28 Caustic Arrow when it comes to damage over time. I cannot stress how insane of a buff this is to damage over time while excluding the fact that we're not even counting all the new nodes we've gotten. So let's go ahead and close out of those. One other thing I did forget on the tree is I do pick up frenzy charges like I was saying. If you don't want to pick up frenzy charges, you don't really have to. Remember that Trickster does give you frenzy charge sustain. So moving back over to the skills, we've got Caustic Arrow, Void Manipulation, Swift Affliction, Damage on full life, so that's one, two, three, four, and physical projectile attack damage. Now, with the new rework to Caustic Arrow, previously you would shoot a Caustic Arrow, it would hit a target, and then it would create a cloud. Now, it's more of like a ground target skill, which means it hits in an area before the cloud applies. What that means is, Decay has the option of proccing on every single target as long as you roll the accuracy. If you have a quiver that has two additional air or one additional arrow and you shoot and you have pierce like we have on the tree and you hit four times in a pack, you're rolling your accuracy like that, assuming you actually hit, to apply your decay. Your decay will stack with your damage over time. So that's one thing to note is decay could be an interesting option. Now we don't have the intelligence to run decay or efficacy, but if you look on the tree, there's not much intel options either. So this is when you just get a piece of gear with like 50 int and you're pretty much done. Um, Mirage Archer could be for quality of life. Uh, I don't know if I'm actually going to use it. Empower is going to be like a further on option, uh, a bit more expensive and tedious because you're not going to have it like day one, level three. And then you have like slower projectiles, which is another okay link that you can throw in. If you don't really enjoy damage on full life, you don't really have to use it. So um, one other thing to note is I was talking about uh, Herald of Agony. I don't know exactly how we're going to apply Herald of Agony, if we're going to apply Herald of Agony. Um, but if we do decide to play apply Herald of Agony, we're probably going to do something with Mirage Archer. Uh, I don't know if I would want my Mirage Archer to shoot my Caustic Arrow, and then maybe I'll build stacks for Herald of Agony and then use it that way. I haven't really decided. Like I said, I really have to actually play it to see what the build is going to lack. Now, on the item side, I went and equipped pretty much just blue gear, all shit, like I said. This is not actual gear, except for the uniques. I have some recommended uniques you can see here. The purpose of this is just to show the build with basic equipment. So if you look here, we have 80 life on our quiver. We have a helmet with 125 life, which is totally understandable because you can roll hybrid rolls. Belly of the beast, this one may be a bit more difficult to acquire. It's 38% life roll. 
We have 85 life on gloves, 60 life on boots, 78 life on amulet, 60, 60, and then a double life roll on a leather belt since leather belt rolls implicit life. And then I just simply threw in three jewels with 35 life. As an evasion character with caustic arrow, we are totaling over 7,000 life. And of course this gear can still be min max. There's no strength rolls. You know, if you remove the belly, you'll be 6,500. If you do incursions with Alva, you can get a mini belly of the beast. So expect to be over 7,000 life with decent evasion, with phase acrobatics, dodge, and everything else. Now, I recommended some uniques that you can find here. Um, now, some of these uniques you may not ever find. I just threw in a couple of them. Uh, in presence for the obvious, it gives you life. We're playing a chaos build or a life-based build. Chaos res gives you free despair and you get maddening presence along with damage over time. Cyclopean Coil is a really interesting belt. Uh, it gives you good life. It also gives you the cannot be frozen if dex is higher than int, so you're automatically freeze immune. That saves you a flask. Cannot be ignited if strength is higher than dex. That doesn't matter. Cannot be shocked if intelligence is higher than strength. You can actually just use a jewel, convert your dex to int, or however else you want to do it, to simply get your intelligence higher than your strength, which would allow you to use decay and efficacy, and at the same time would give you immunity to shock. So Cyclopean Coil is a really good belt. Um, Darkness and Throne, another really common one. You get two Abyssal Sockets, whatever you'd like. Cherubium's Malefus is okay, gives you decent chaos damage and life. Carcass, another okay piece, life, Ellie res, AoE, area damage. Uh, Lore Weave, another common option, gives you the plus to max res. Uh, Feminist Weave, this is something I highly recommend if you can acquire it. Um, it is going to be difficult, it's bestiary, but it gives you access to Aspect of the Spider. The reason why I recommend this is because of the following. We don't scale AoE on our tree. Because we don't scale AoE, our Blasphemy Temporal Chains is never really going to be that crazy. However, unless they nerfed it, Aspect of the Spider is like the entire screen regardless. Um, so I totally recommend trying to get this. This would be like one of your chase items. Um, super crazy good. And then for your bow, it's pretty simple. All you're looking for is plus the level of gems to put it in. Now, I can't really tell you every single itemization, prioritization, etc. You can simply look at the tags of Caustic Arrow and scale it that way via increased damage, chaos damage, damage over time. Uh, you can use Hidden Potential and scale it. There's many, many, many ways, and I will create an updated build guide as I actually play through the character. That pretty much sums up majority of it. Um, I did add a little bit of notes here if you guys want to read through it but that pretty much summarizes it. Uh, I was actually going to create or add my Templar in, but since this video is already like 20 minutes long, I'll just make a separate video for you guys for the Templar. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. This is going to be my league starter for Delve in SSF. Um, I'm pretty excited for it. I hope you guys are too. Now, if you guys like the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. Have a wonderful time, everybody. Take care.